This week's Nifty Gifties on F5 Live Refreshing Technology is proudly powered by the Microsoft Store. Whether you're looking for a new laptop, tablet, Xbox, games, or a whole lot more, you can get them at the Microsoft Store. Remember, current students, faculty, parents, and active military can save up to 10% off almost everything. To browse the products and learn more about the discounts, you can go to f5live.tv slash Microsoft. So we've got an interesting cybersecurity story this week. Um, Las Vegas came to a halt last week um, because of a semi-sophisticated hacking job um, that was carried out by a more sophisticated social engineering job. Um, all of MGM stopped. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, apparently Caesars Entertainment saw the same thing. Turns out it was all from the same uh, hacking group whose name has escaped me. It's something with a double S. Scattered Spider. That's the one. Scattered Spider, Scattered Spider right? Yeah, that's the one. Um, it's a group of young kids, 19 to 22 mostly, um, and they've had some high-profile hacks, almost none of them using actual hacks. Almost everything they've done so far has been because of social engineering. If you don't know what social engineering is, that is hacking a person rather than a computer. So in the case of MGM... Here's how they did it. Somebody went on LinkedIn, clickety-clack, went looking for somebody that worked at an MGM hotel in Las Vegas. Got their name, then called the help desk and said, I'm LinkedIn person. I've, I'm not on site. My password's not working. Can you reset it for me? And they did. That was it. A 10-minute phone call. So, but when you said, can you reset it for me, though, did they not reset it to that person's phone, use a factor of authentication for that, like the person's phone or their email? So they have already possibly had access to the IT provider. And the reason I say that is they did with Caesars. So my guess is that this one went similarly. They they pulled something very similar at the IT provider for Caesars that got them into the network. My guess is this was somewhere in that vicinity, but no, there does not appear to be any evidence that any 2FA or anything like that was involved. They just reset the password. They're like, hey, can you reset it to blah, blah, blah? And from what I can tell, somebody went... And reset the password. So, 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 so I see, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I don't think either of us have all the details that we would want to, to, sure. to speak about this with great authority. And we but, never will. Uh, but I, then we probably never will. But I, I, I feel like there's a lot wrong with this story, right? Like one thing is shouldn't, so there ought to be a second factor of authentication. There ought to be some thing that you do to um, to get to prove who you are if you're calling the IT department. Um, second of all, like I don't know what they meant, like was it their password to their email and then their password for their email was the one uh, was a login for everything else and there was so so one, there ought to be have been a 2FA of some kind and even if their password was reset the account itself should have had a 2FA like you know, mm -hmm. if they are using single sign-on from Google or something, the the they could have, you know, made it made it single, you know, made it so you need a second factor. the the other The other problem that I see there is, whoever it is they looked up on LinkedIn, obviously had administrative rights, mm -hmm. right? Or did they use that person to then in, for to then send a phishing mail to somebody else? Because, like, if you if you like did that as me, right? You would have certain rights, but you wouldn't have the rights to all the servers and admin right. and everything like that. So they had to have gotten in 
as somebody who was like root or something on a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And then that person didn't have 2FA and that person also used the same password for everything because that's another thing or unless they were able to reset like I you know like let's say I don't know it was somewhere there was like a Linux server or something and the person had mm-hmm. to log in there to, con- to control all this stuff. Well, now now that you're saying that that person also was using the same password for the Linux logon or they had a single factor for that too and then therefore they were able to reset the password on the on the like like there's just a lot wrong with this because it sounds like either there was a single pass password for this person's accounts on everything mm-hmm. or sort of single sign on they were able to re- or they were able to reset the passwords on any subsequent accounts once they had without their another email factor. Or whatever. Once they had their email, which means that not only was there another was there a single factor for the email, but that means there was a single factor for all of their authentications too, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like or or it could have been as simple as they got into somebody's email and from a corporate email address were were able to get gain access to like a corporate mailing list and sent out an attachment. Right. So if they were trying like so if they used it for like further phishing mm-hmm. um for or further just hoping phishing. somebody would click the link. Because what happened is ransomware software got installed. This is the same thing that happened with Caesars a couple weeks ago. Uh, Caesars paid the ransom. They wanted thirty million. Caesars gave them fifteen. Uh, they bargained. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, apparently, they paid them fifteen and they let go. Uh, I mean, listen, I guess I would take the fifteen too. But I mean, I didn't think you could bargain with ransomers. I mean, apparently, you can. Who knew? So yeah. So we hear hacks, right? And, you know, we talk about them all the time. Yahoo was hacked and everybody's email was compromised. 173 million or something like that. You know, Home Depot was hacked and some credit card information got out. Target was hacked and some credit card information got out. So, so what happened? There's been ransomware in governments where you can't get into your, into your laptop until, you know, the government deals with it. So what happened here? Everything. Everything was connected. Down to the f- to the the case that they had to give out physical keys to unlock the hotel room doors because Yeah, it's amazing. Doors didn't work. <laughs> Elevators didn't work. All of the slot machines seemed to be down. I saw photos of all of these digital slot machines with just black screens with some yeah. red and white text on them and then a yellow thing at the bottom. None of them I could read well enough <laughs> to know what they said, but they were surprisingly colorful text. Uh, the ATMs stopped working. So if the credit card processors didn't work and you wanted to pay for something in cash, womp womp, that's not going to happen either. I mean, this brought MGM to its knees. It's impressive. Yes, it's so it's amazing how so you said in the article that it's not very sophisticated, but they managed to do a lot of damage mm-hmm. to take control. Now maybe that maybe it's just that easy. What's really weird to me is so I shared in the chat room an article that someone had shared with me from a site called 404 Media. I've never uh, I have heard of them before. I don't know why you would call yourself 404 Media, but whatever. So they said, so somebody, a reporter from there, Jason Kobler, Keebler, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, uh, went to, uh, went to, uh, this is, you know, I would do this story if I was there too, right? Because it seems like an interesting tech story, so to speak. He went to an MGM casino and to gambling under these hacked conditions to find out, um, you know, just how bad it is, right? And, uh, you know, it's pretty bad. 
what what was really weird about it though was so, the, the randomness of it so you know he reports that there were like rows of machines and some of them were not working and some of them were working so like how could you have a hack that sort of like here's a machine the same model is down because of the hack and here's one that's not like it's 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 just weird that's weird to me um so if you're apparently if, there's if you're in the, if you're watching yeah. live and you're in the chat room i just posted the link for everybody yeah so you know and then he talked about how in the restaurants they had to take orders by hand i think one of the weirdest thing is people who are gambling like who are gambling at the slot machines if they want to cash out or something they have to wait for someone to come and like give them their money come by the slot machine and some of them wait like half an hour and they're like oh forget it i'm just gonna I'm just going to lose my $10 or whatever was left in there. I mean, I don't know why you would go and gamble there under these circumstances. I mean, well, I don't understand gambling much at all, but like you got plenty of other choices of places that aren't broken to go gamble. Why you would go to the broken one when you could just walk like three feet and go to one that's not broken. It's Las Vegas. Uh -huh. I don't understand. I mean, I get that there are people who probably had hotel reservations and they got the and they're gonna stay there, but in the rooms that they reserve, but I that if they really want to gamble, I think they could just walk next door and gamble somewhere else. But uh, I mean, obviously, it's costing uh, MGM a lot of money because there's probably a lot of people who are walking away from gambling at these machines and not just the slot machines, but walking away from the kind of you know, crazy stuff that's, you know, delays in checking in, delay, uh -huh. you know, delays in getting your, um, you know, bill at the restaurant, all this crazy stuff. Um, and the way that, uh, you know, the author put it, it's like the people who are really suffering here are not the, I mean, yes, it's a really convenience for the, the tourists, but, you know, the people who have to work there, they have to they have to work much harder because of this and yeah. i kind of got the impression uh 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 i kind of got the impression that like he's saying oh you know mgm really should pay the should really pay the ransom uh and you know seem, seemingly a lot of the the staff kind of told him hey told him hey we really wish they would just pay up so we could get back to business as usual yeah um but i don't know what if i would pay up if i were mgm like caesars did i think you know that's negotiating with terrorists and uh -huh. and it encourages more the same and how do you know that if you pay them they're not just going to turn around and do it again next right. week right and you know the fact that caesars paid it is probably the reason why mgm got hit because they proved that it's a profitable endeavor Right. I mean, and I'm sure that Caesar's calculation was like, we're a casino we're rolling in money and, and it costs us more than $15 million. Probably would cost us more than $15 million to not pay it. Per day. The number I saw was $18 million per day they were losing. Ah, uh, so yes, they would, you know, so... But I understand MGM's position. I mean, it's yeah. real. Now, how do we know that the hackers are 19 to 22 years old? So apparently there's number there's information available on this group. They're pretty loud about what they do, uh, which is fascinating. There's, there, I guess there's profiles. Are they going to get caught? Well, when you're 19 to 22, you think you're not going to. Are they, do we know, are they in some country that's beyond extradition or something? Probably. Uh, that I did not see. Uh, I didn't see any country of origin information. Um, but, like, they're apparently a very loud group. They're not afraid to talk about what they're up to. And 
ish who they are. Obviously, they don't put names out there, but you know, they've got their their hacker names. They're not you know spinning around in phone booths, but you know what I mean. They've <laughs> they've got their their hacker pseudonyms and ages and profiles and the whole thing. Ooh, wow, this is very interesting. Scattered Spider is believed to be primarily made up of operatives based both in the United States and the United Kingdom, according to Wikipedia, which is, oh. of course, never wrong. But, so, that's pretty bold right there, because they, if, you, if they are in the United States or the United Kingdom, they will, you know, the authorities can, can get to them. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if they were in in China or Russia or something. I don't think much could happen. But. Okay. So here's a story I didn't see before. MGM oh. hack followed failed bid to rig slot machines. They tried to rig the slot machine. It didn't work. And they're like, all right. And just pushed them over. See, rigging the slot machine would be more. I, I mean, I don't know much about how traceable it is to like get you, you know, when you're getting collecting your ransom for ransomware. But like rigging the slot machine, wouldn't that mean that they'd have to actually go there in person and use a slot machine? So, so it says this that article seems from pretty bold. Yeah, from the Financial Times says in a trick reminiscent of a heist movie. The hackers who allegedly breached the security of MGM's casinos this month originally planned to manipulate the software running the slot machines and recruit mules to gamble and milk the machines. <laughs> oh, man. That is... That is... Uh, that is... That is bold. That is bold. Thwarted well, in that plan, the group fell back on a decade-old formula that has reaped billions of dollars for ransomware operators. They siphoned off the company's data, encrypted some of it, and are now demanding cryptocurrency to release it. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's a real, it, it's a really serious problem. It's a really fun- serious problem. The Financial Times talked to somebody over Telegram claiming to be part of the group. Uh-huh. Great. Wow. What, what did they say? Uh, uh, describe the techniques used to evade detection in the system. While their claims cannot be verified, researchers familiar with the group said the technical description given to the Financial Times matched attacks on at least 100 other victims over the past two years. So they knew some inside information. Well, so two things. Telegram is not untraceable, folks. If we're talking security, Telegram's not untraceable. The messages may not be uh, unencryptable, but the communication is physically traceable. Just putting that out there. So, I mean, they might they might have, you know, I don't know. They might be on a zombie computer or something. Yeah. Uh, also, also Financial Times. I mean, they're journalists, so they're not. I mean, unless someone were to obtain a warrant or something. They're not going to turn uh, over their source information. They're not going to turn over their source. Yeah. Uh, Journalists have been held in contempt of court for not turning over, but they've never been forced to turn over. Yeah, I can't, I can't see how, I mean, whoever, whoever conducted that interview, they're not going to want to turn it over. I wouldn't. No, of course not, because you'll never get no a confidential source again. Yeah, no credibility, so can't do that. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean so. the warrant could be not of the source, but of communication with an account. 
doesn't necessarily have to involve yeah, the the journalist. Telegram is surprisingly easy to trace. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, maybe they go into Telegram and, and warrant Telegram. I don't know. Yeah. All they have to do is know one of the accounts in the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a fascinating situation. And, you know, as we're, I think, now in the 100-day window for CES, talking about Las Vegas is, you know, in our mind anyway. Oh, uh, oh, that makes me want to say just one more thing. A uh, colleague, a uh, friend of mine, colleague of mine, Gloria Sen, posted posted this story about Las Vegas. I, I think maybe this is where I saw I saw got the four four media story on on Twitter, and she said something like, "Well, good thing this isn't happening during CES." And my thought was the exact opposite, like. Oh, I, I, it would be great if this happened during CES because then I could walk through casino without hearing all those annoying slot machines. <laughs> Plus, we'd be there to be able to cover this firsthand. Yes, I, yes. I mean, I don't see... I mean, I guess it might be an annoyance if this happened to everywhere and then I go to get my Panda Express and I have to be cash or something. <laughs> but, but, like, other than that... Um, other than that, I don't really see see the down like see see how this would be a downside for uh for ces because i i i hate gambling so and i hate uh-huh. the annoying noise and crowd of casinos so if, if this stopped if this stopped the casino part of it it would be great for me i also have a feeling that somehow we'd figure out how to do a short show from the casino on the topic yeah <laughs> it would be i mean it would be it would be kind of it would be kind of interesting, but at the same time, at this point, it would be old news because it's happened before. Yeah, exactly. Well, if they've hit over a hundred people, a hundred organizations before, my guess is they're ramping up in uh, style and severity. That usually means that they're going to get caught at some point because you start getting more reckless. So. Yeah. We'll definitely keep yeah, an eye on this group like. and, uh, and see what comes of it. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of F5 Live Refreshing Technology. If you did, please uh, subscribe to the channel down below. And of course, hit the notification bell because we know that subscriptions don't mean much on YouTube anymore. Uh, if you've got topics that you'd like us to talk about in the future, please uh, comment them down below. And if you'd like to not follow us on YouTube, there's lots of ways that you can follow along with our content by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all of the ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along.